Proposed to take you a short conducted tour of the Constein Company as seen through the eyes of a visitor. Concert Iron Company Limited, registered in 1864, is the modern development of the Derwent and Constein Company Limited, earlier the Derwent Iron Company, which was formed in 1840 to produce iron from local iron ore deposits in conjunction with the several qualities of very high grade coking coal underlying the area. The former have long since been exhausted and for many years now the company has functioned on high grade imported ores. The works which at concert covers an area of more than 650 acres forms a completely integrated modern steelworks. We will begin our tour at the power station. We see there the coal handling plant which feeds one of the many fuels burned on the station for steam raising purposes. The quantity of coal used is normally 2,000 tonnes per week. The other byproduct fuels used are blast furnace gas and coal carbon gas. Both these fuels are byproduct gaseous fuels from other parts of the steelworks. In the far distance, you see the mains which carry the blast furnace and coal carbon gas to the boilers for steam raising purposes, and the mains in the foreground are the mains which carry the air made at the blowers to produce iron in the blast furnaces. We use approximately 4 million cubic feet of blast furnace gas per hour and up to 200,000 cubic feet of coke oven gas per hour on these boilers. There are five boilers in the station capable of making 120,000 pounds of steam per hour each. These boilers feed four blowers, one blower for each blast furnace and one as a standby blower, and also three 15 megawatt electrical generators. There's also a small blower which feeds air to the Bessemer plant. Here we see two operators preparing to commission a blower and signals from those controls will indicate to the blast furnace people that air is ready to proceed along to the blast furnace. There's a view of one of the 15 megawatt electrical generators and a further set in the foreground of the picture. This operator is able to control the complete power distribution throughout the plant from this control board. All the power requirements of the company are met by the power station. All from the blast furnaces comes from many parts of the world, Newfoundland, Venezuela, Labrador, Sweden, and French Equatorial Africa. It is brought to the time by ship, and then by arrangement with the time commissioners, British Railways, and the Concert Iron Company, it is hauled to concert in special trains. The wagons attached to this train hold approximately 56 tons of ore each and the whole train can be discharged in a matter of 30 seconds by means of controls from the engine driver's cabin. Once the train has been emptied, the doors are closed and the train goes back to Tyne Dock to collect further supplies of ore to be brought to concert. Ore from the wagons is allowed to fall into bunkers located below the rails and from this point is conveyed to the blast furnace by means of conveyor belt. We use approximately 35,000 tonnes of iron ore per week at concert 
and this ore is taken by conveyor belt to a stocking out yard. Because we receive supplies of ore from many parts of the world, it's natural that their analyses will be different. Therefore, the different types and grades of ore are stocked in different piles. The ore from these different piles is transferred to a transfer car by means of this grab. The transfer car in turn places the ore in the bunker system located at the blast furnaces. This grab is capable of handling 150 tons of ore per hour. From the bunker system located at the blast furnaces, mixture of ore, coke and limestone is fed into a skip hoist. This skip car, when full, takes its charge to the top of the blast furnace and once at the top, pours its contents into the blast furnace. There we see a loaded car going up the hoist and an empty one coming down to receive a further charge. There are three blast furnaces at concert, each capable of making some 5,500 tons of pig iron per week each. Other byproducts from the blast furnace include slag and blast furnace gas. The blast furnace gas is distributed throughout the organization and is used for reheating purposes in the steel making plants and in the rolling mills. After a period of time, the blast furnace is prepared for tapping, and here we see two operators drilling a hole into the iron notch. At a later stage, this hole is made larger by means of an oxygen lance. It is from this hole that the iron from the blast furnace will flow down the runner into two ladles located in the casting bay. Normally 125 tons of metal are cast at each tap and the furnaces tap regularly every four hours. This metal is run into two ladles of approximately 70 tons capacity each. During the tapping of the furnace, samples are taken and sent to the laboratory for analysis and this is to ensure the highest quality of iron being delivered to the melting shop for steel making purposes. This iron contains 4% carbon, 1% silicon, about 0.6% manganese, 0.6% phosphorus, and about 0.05% of sulfur. After the furnace is tapped, it is necessary to make the hole in the iron notch solid again. And this machine is capable of inserting a special refractory plug into the hole in the iron notch. Molten iron from the blast furnaces is then transferred to the Bessemer plant. And here we see two ladles of molten iron arriving at the Bessemer plant.
This molten iron is fed into a thousand ton hot metal mixer and from there is taken in 25 ton lots to be blown in the Bessemer converter. There we see the Bessemer converter being charged with molten iron. It is normally charged in the horizontal position. Once the contents of that ladle have been poured into the vessel, it is then turned into a vertical position and air is turned on to the bottom of the converter. This process was invented by Bessemer in this country in 1856. The air is now being turned onto the vessel and the vessel will be shortly placed into the vertical position. It usually takes between 10 and 12 minutes to blow the 25 tons of metal in the Bessemer converter and this operator is able to judge from the shape and size of the flame issuing from the converter mouth how far the blowing has proceeded. During the blowing process, the carbon is reduced from 4% to 0.1%, the silicon is reduced from 1% to 0, the manganese from about 0.6% to about 0.2%, and unfortunately the phosphorus and sulphur are still left in the iron. These elements must then be removed in the open hearth furnace. After a period of time, the vessel is brought to the horizontal position again and then lowered still further and the contents of the converter are poured into a hot metal transfer car. The temperature of the iron going into that vessel is normally about 1200 degrees centigrade and after 10 or 12 minutes blowing, the temperature has been elevated to some 1600 degrees centigrade. There the contents of that hot metal transfer car are being poured into the back of an open hearth furnace. It is in this furnace that further refining will be done to remove the remaining elements, phosphorus and sulphur. This system of working using hot metal is referred to as the duplex system. Other systems of making steel consist in using large proportions of scrap. And at concert, we normally use some 10,000 tons of scrap per week.